Hello friends. In this video, we are going to solve a problem on how to draw the Nyquist plot of a system whose transfer function is given to us. So let's try to solve the problem. So our problem is we have to draw the Nyquist plot and examine the stability of the closed loop control system which is having the open loop transfer function as gs hs equals to as multiplied by 1 plus s upon s q plus 4 s plus a. So let's try to solve this problem. Now to draw the Nyquist plot, we have to use this open loop transfer fun function. So first we are going to put S equals to J omega in this open loop transfer function. So our first step will be to put S equals to J omega in this transfer function so that we can obtain G J omega H J omega. So what we have done, we have put S equals to J omega in this transfer function. So it has, we have obtained G J omega, H J omega equals to K. In place of S, we have written J omega, then 1 plus J omega upon S cube. So it will become J omega cube plus 4 J omega plus 8. Now let's simplify it. When we take the cube, so it will become J cube omega cube. And we know that j square is equals to minus 1. So we can replace the j cube by it will become j square into j. So j square in place of it we can write minus 1. So this transfer function will become Okay, so in place of j square, we have written minus 1 and then we are left with only 1j plus 4j omega plus 8. Now, let us suppose that this k, which is the gain, it is equals to 1. So now this gj omega, hj omega will become Now in place of this, we can write first the real part and then the imaginary part. So real part is 8 plus from these two terms, we can take out j as common. So we will have plus j. Then the remaining terms will be here. We are left with 4 omega and minus here we are left with omega q. So what we have done, we have represented this uh, term into the form of the real part plus the imaginary part so that when we are going to take the magnitude and the phase angle it will be easy for us okay now the next step will be to find out the magnitude and the phase angle of this gj omega and hj omega so let us first take out the magnitude so magnitude will be
This is the magnitude of G G omega H G omega. This transfer function, open loop transfer function. Now, in the magnitude, we take the real part square plus the imaginary part square. So, for the first term, we have only the real part. So, the real part, uh, sorry, only the imaginary part is there. That is the J omega. So, J omega square we have to take. So, here the imaginary part is omega. Okay, like suppose we have. A complex number x plus i y so when we take the magnitude we take x square plus y square that is the real part square plus the imaginary part square and then it's under root so here we have the imaginary part as omega so omega square and then it's under root so it will be only omega then in this we have the real part as 1 and the imaginary part as omega so under root of the real part square that is 1 square it will be 1 and then the imaginary part square that, so it will be omega square and it's under root now in the denominator we have the real part as 8 so 8 square will be 64 plus the imaginary part is 4 omega minus omega cube. So its square is there. And then we have to take the under root. So in this way, we are going to calculate the magnitude of this open loop transfer function. Just take the square of the real part plus the imaginary part square and then its under root. So you can easily calculate the magnitude. Now comes the phase angle. So phase angle is represented by phi and it is the phase angle of g j omega and h j omega. Now for this if we have a complex number then its phase is given by tan inverse of imaginary part upon the real part. Okay, imaginary part is y and real part is x. So it will be tan inverse of y by x. Now, here we have the imaginary part is omega and real part is 0 here. So we will have tan inverse of omega upon 0. Then for this, we have the imaginary part as omega and real part is 1. So plus tan inverse of omega upon 1. So this is the phase angle of the numerator. When we want to calculate the phase angle of denominator, then we will take minus sign. So minus tan inverse of, we have the imaginary part as 4 omega minus omega cube and the real part is 8. So it will be tan inverse of 4 omega minus omega cube upon 8. Now, if we take minus sign common from this 4 omega minus omega cube, then the phase angle will become phi equals to tan inverse of omega upon 0. So if we take, we have taken the minus sign common here. So we are left with omega cube minus 4 omega. Now this has become tan inverse of minus y by x. And it is equals to minus tan inverse of y by x. Okay. So this minus sign will come out and it will become plus. So phi equals to. Here we have tan inverse of omega upon 0. That means tan inverse of infinity. So tan inverse of infinity is equals to 90 degrees. So we will have 90 degrees for this plus tan inverse of omega upon 1. And this has become because it is tan inverse of minus y by x. So it is equals to minus tan inverse of y by x. So minus and minus sign will become plus sign. And we will have tan inverse of omega cube minus 4 omega by 8. So we have calculated the magnitude and the phase angle of the open loop transfer function. This equation is for the magnitude. Let's mark it as 1. And this equation is for the phase angle. Mark it as 2. 
Now, as we see that the magnitude and the phase angle equations, they contain omega. So now we are going to take different, different values of this omega, that is the frequency. And then we are going to calculate for those values of omega, the magnitude and the phase angle. So now we are going to make a table where we are going to take different values of omega. And for those values of omega, we will calculate the magnitude and phase angle so that we can draw the Nyquist plot of the system. So we have drawn a table here we are going to take different values of omega and for those values of omega we will calculate the magnitude and the phase angle using the equations 1 and 2. We have taken the value of omega starting from 0 and infinity. We always take 0 and infinity as one of our values and the other values we can choose according to our wish like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 5 and 10 we have chosen here. Now we are going to put omega equals to 0 in our magnitude equation. This is our magnitude equation. So put omega equals to 0 here. So it will be 0, 0 square plus 1, then 64 plus this is 0. So the whole term is going to become 0 because here we have omega in the product. So the whole term is going to become 0. So our magnitude is 0 for omega equals to 0. Now comes the phase angle equation. So in this phase angle equation, if we put omega equals to 0, then it is 90 degrees plus tan inverse of 0 will be 0 degrees plus tan inverse of this is also 0. So our phase angle will be 90 degrees because 90 plus 0 plus 0. So our answer is 90 degrees. So phase angle is 90 degrees. Now we are going to put 0 0.1. So here if we have omega equals to 0 0.1, then we will have 0 0.1 square. Then here we are going to have 4 into 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 cube. So when we solve this, we will get the magnitude as 1.26. Now, say, similarly, you have to put omega equals to 0 0.1 in the phase angle equation. Here we are going to put tan inverse of 0 0.1 plus tan inverse of 0 0.1 cube minus 4 into 0 0.1. So when we solve this, we will get the phase angle as 92.8 degrees. Now, similarly, we have to put omega equals to 0 0.5, 5, 10 in the magnitude and the phase angle equations and then we can put their values here. So, I am directly writing its values here. For omega equals to 0 0.5, we will have magnitude as 6.8. So for these values, we have calculated the magnitude and the phase angle. Now let's put omega equals to infinity in the magnitude and phase angle equation. So for omega equals to infinity here, we will have infinity divided by 0. So our magnitude will be 0 here. And if we put phase angle as, uh, if we calculate the phase angle for omega equals to infinity, then we will have tan inverse of infinity plus tan inverse of infinity. So 90 plus 90 plus 90, so it will become 270 degrees. 
So in this table, we have taken different different values of omega and for those values, we have calculated the magnitude and phase angle. Now for these values, uh, using these values, we are going to draw the Nyquist plot. Okay, so let's try to draw it. So uh, on all these lines, we have written this um, x-axis, it is the magnitude and on the y-axis, we have the angles. Now angles in the positive angles, they are calculated in the anti-clockwise direction and negative angles, they are going to be, uh, their direction will be in the clockwise direction, okay? So now we have the omega equals to 0, magnitude is 0 and phase angle is 90 degrees. So this is our line, okay, the magnitude is 0 here and phase angle is 90 degrees. So on this line we have the omega equals to 0. Then we have for omega equals to 0 0.1 we have magnitude as 1.26 and the phase angle is 92.8 so 92.8 will be somewhat in middle of this because we have 90 degrees here and plus 180 here so we will uh, uh, take the direction of the positive angles in this so 90 degrees is here so 92.6 will be somewhat here so we will draw a line here this is 92.6 and the magnitude is this is 0 so this point let's take its minus 1 plus j0 this will be used later on so we will have to mark 1.26 so 1.26 will be somewhat here and this line is for omega equals to 0 0.1 now next we have omega equals to 0 0.5, magnitude is 6.8 and phase angle is 103.4 degrees. So for this phase angle we are going to draw a line. This is 103.4 degrees and this is omega equals to 0 0.5. The magnitude is 6.8 so it will be somewhat here. Now for next frequency we have omega equals to 1 and magnitude is 16.55 and phase angle is 114.44 degrees. So we are going to draw the line for the phase angle starting from here. The frequency is omega equals to 1 and the magnitude is 16.55 so it will be somewhat here. We can draw like here we have 4, 8, 12, 16 the divisions for the magnitude. So here also we can have the divisions for 4, 8, 12. This is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Now the next we have. The angle is 181.82 and the magnitude is 9.6 and frequency is 5. So 181.82 will be just close to it. And the magnitude is 9. So the point is here somewhere. Now the fre uh, frequency was omega equals to 5. So we will write omega equals to 5 here and the phase angle here. Now the next we have omega equals to 10 and the magnitude is 10.5 and phase angle is 263.81 degrees. So we will draw this 263.81. Omega equals to 10 and magnitude is 10.5. So 10.5 magnitude will be here. Now we have 
next the magnitude is zero and phase angle is 270 degrees and uh, frequency is omega equals to infinity so magnitude zero is here phase angle is 270 degrees and here we will write omega equals to infinity now we are going to join all these points so that we can get the polar plot first we are going to get the polar plot and Nyquist plot is the mirrored image of polar plot so we are going to join all the points This is the direction of this polar plot starting from omega equals to 0 and terminating at omega equals to infinity. Now we have to draw the mirror image of this. Okay, so mirror image will be the mirror image will be somewhat like this. Now we are, uh, when we have first we have drawn the polar plot and then we have drawn the Nyquist plot which is the mirror image of polar plot. Now we are going to check the stability of the system. So for stability we will see that how many encirclements are there for the point minus 1 plus J0. Okay. So when we see starting from omega equals to 0, first time the curve is moving like this. So there is one encirclement and then this mirror image is also encircling this point. So there are total two encirclements. So for the stability we can say we will have n equals to p minus z. Okay. Now n is the number of encirclements, p is the number of poles and z is the number of zeros so n encirclements we have two encirclements poles are also two because if we see that the open loop transfer function so if we see we have two poles which are lying on the right hand side of the s plane because this if we take out the roots of this equation then there will be complex roots and those complex roots will lie on the right hand side so we have two poles and then zeros are we are going to calculate the value of z so z will come out to be zero so if z is equals to zero then we can say that the closed loop system is stable okay so here we can make a comment about the stability of the system that z is coming out to be zero so we can say that the closed loop system is stable so the question was we have to draw the nyquist plot and we have to examine the stability of the closed loop control system so what we have done we have this open loop transfer function we put s equals to j omega so as we can obtain gj omega and hj omega then we calculated the magnitude and the phase angles this was the phase angle equation and the next we have the magnitude equations and in the magnitude and the phase angle equations then we take the different values of omega and form this table and using this table we draw the polar plot so polar plot uh, First we draw the polar plot and then we have the mirror image of the polar plot and for stability we check the encirclements made by this curve around the point minus 1 plus j0 and according to the number of encirclements we are going to calculate the value of z and if z is coming out to be 0 in this question so we can say that the closed loop system is stable. So in this way we can solve the problems in which we have to draw the Nyquist plot of the system when its open loop transfer function is given to us. So I hope that this problem is clear to you. Thank you.